There are two ways you can have doubts about the practice or doubts about your own ability to do the practice. One is from caring a lot, and the other is from not caring at all. The second kind is not encouraged, of course. You say, well, I doubt that anyone could overcome sensuality, or I doubt that I could overcome my anger, or I doubt I could any get anywhere in my concentration. If that comes from not caring, it's going to be pretty fatal to the practice. But if the goal is something you really want, true happiness is something you really want, and you really do care about your own well-being, then the, any doubt you have based on that comes from caring, and that kind of doubt is encouraged. Because it's doubt based on curiosity. Will this work? And there's a solution to that, and that's by giving it a try. You just sit around and wonder, 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 will, the, will this work, will this not work? Without actually trying it, you're never going to know. And it's a kind of wondering that comes from not caring. So you have to look inside yourself. Do you really care about happiness? Are you serious about it? Not serious in the sense of being grim, but have you had enough of false happiness, happiness that's let you down? If you decide you've had enough, okay, then focus on the practice. It's one of the ways that you get yourself motivated to practice, the Buddha said, is having the self as a governing principle. You realize that you started the practice because you really did want to put an end to suffering. Then if you give up, what does that say about your desire to put an end to suffering? If you really love yourself, you devote yourself to the practice. Because the practice simply makes sense. You know, the stronger you can make your concentration, the stronger your mindfulness, the better you'll be in a position to judge things. Was the Buddha right about what he said, that there isn't deathless happiness, it doesn't depend on any conditions at all? And to know that, you've got to make yourself a reliable judge. That's why you need more concentration, you need more discernment, more mindfulness all the good qualities that are developed, as you can see by focusing on the breath. It's interesting that when the Buddha talks about the cure for doubt or uncertainty, the cure is the same as the program you follow for developing discernment. In other words, looking at what's skillful and what's unskillful in your mind and seeing what happens. If I develop the skillful qualities, what happens? What happens when I Learn how to let go of some of those unskillful qualities. We hear that the Buddha says sensuality is a bad thing. Well, you understand what he means by it, of course. This mind's obsession with thinking about sensual pleasures, either ones you've had in the past, the ones you plan to have in the future. And you can think for hours about that. And then when the actual pleasure comes, does it live up to the billing? And what else is involved in getting that pleasure? You begin to see. Look, there's a lot of there are a lot of drawbacks that go along with that kind of activity. A lot of energy goes into it, and there's not much payoff. What happens if you learn how to put those thoughts aside? And part of the mind will complain. It wants its instant pleasure, because there is a certain pleasure that comes out of just fantasizing about things. Well, you've got the breath. You've got the body sitting here, being energized by the breath. Can you use that energy to create a sense of pleasure right now? What would feel really good right now? And this may take work, too, and it may take, require energy as well. But you begin to realize that the pleasure that comes from that is totally without drawbacks, and it's something you can it's a hit you can take again and again and again. And unlike a lot of the pleasures of the world which dull the mind, this pleasure doesn't dull the mind. It gives you a sense of well-being, gives you a sense of strength, clarity in the mind. 
And as you do that, you begin to see, oh yeah, it is possible to let go of unskillful qualities. Maybe not everything right away, but you see that the mind is clearer and the mind is more stable. You feel better about yourself when you actually put this into practice. You've gained some discernment. So we overcome doubt not by just trying to force ourselves to believe. We've overcome doubt by developing our discernment to see what's, what really is skillful. We, the Buddha gives some general guidelines on this, but there are a lot of the details that we're going to have to work out for ourselves. As in this distinction between different kinds of doubt, the doubt that for, encourages you to practice, to find things out, as opposed to the doubt that says, I don't really care, I don't want to bother with this anymore. They both qualify as doubt, but they really are different things. They're skillful doubt and unskillful doubt. And because skillful doubt is based on curiosity, then the solution or the resolution of that doubt is to develop all the qualities you can to make the mind sharper, to understand itself better as to what you're doing, what you're thinking, what you're saying that's going to lead to suffering, and what you're going to do and say and think that's going to lead to well-being. Now, if you find you have the doubt that's based on not really caring, you've got to make yourself care. This is where the Buddha gives all those talks about the drawbacks of sensuality, the drawbacks of not practicing, the drawbacks of staying in this process of wandering around to who knows, who knows how many lifetimes. The uncertainty of it all. It's just like being, throwing a stick up in the air. Sometimes it lands on this end, sometimes it lands on that end, sometimes it lands flat in the middle. That's pretty much our course through all this wandering on that we do. And it doesn't have any end in sight. The craving fosters your consciousness that keeps going, the consciousness fosters the craving, and they go round and around and around. They can feed each other forever until you decide that you've really had enough. But as you look at someone who's extremely poor, sick, destitute, you have to remind yourself, you've been there, and you could be there again if you're not careful. Someone who's extremely wealthy, very famous, surrounded by all the pleasures and friends you could imagine. And he says, you could be, you've been there in the past, and again, if you're not careful, you could be there again. Because even being very wealthy is not unalloyed pleasure. You may decide, well, I want to design my life so it's just right. How many times, again and again and again, do you have to design things? And it's never quite just right, because there's this element in your own mind that's not right. Swings in this direction, swings in that direction. As long as you can't trust your own mind, you'll never find anything trustworthy in life. And if you can't even trust yourself to care about your own happiness, what are you going to find that you can trust? So these two kinds of doubt, and you want to take any doubt that's based on not caring and turn it into the doubt that's based on caring, because that, that second kind of doubt is something that can actually become a motivation in the practice. You hear the Ajahns in Thailand saying this. On the one hand, this they say that with stream entry, your doubts are gone. That's a specific doubt, though, actually two specific doubts. One is any doubt you might have about the truth of the Buddha's teachings, and to any doubt you might have about your own ability to gain that goal, you find that, yes, you have this witness inside that what the Buddha said really is true. But as the John said, that doesn't end all of your doubts, because the next doubt is, well, what is it like to go all the way? And until you've gone all the way, your doubts are not gone. But again, the doubt of not caring, that ends with gaining results in the practice. Seeing this really does make a difference. And what the Buddha taught, it really is special. It wasn't just some 
fly by night kind of thing. It wasn't a truth that's true only for people in India back 2,500 years ago, and we've got better pleasures, better, more advanced ways of ha finding happiness in a regular day-to-day -day life. That's not the case. The happiness he found, that the end of suffering is something that shakes everything, and people, people encounter it. People find their way there. So that, those kinds of doubts are gone. But still you want the doubt that says, well, what's the next step like? And again, you have to learn how to modulate that so that you actually do the steps without trying to rush past them. But the doubt that's based on wanting to know, that's based on caring, turn that doubt into curiosity. You've been hearing the Dharma for who knows how long now. But what is it talking about? There's only one way to find out. That's simply by testing the Dharma, by testing yourself. You've got the chance to do that. Don't throw it away. <laughs>